Thank you. I, I have a problem here because the chairman uh, presented me before and said that I have a sense of humor. Unfortunately, I didn't bring any jokes with me to prove him right. So all I can say in this regard is uh, that I, my speech will try to be like a miniskirt, namely short enough to be interesting, but long enough to cover the essentials. And I know you've heard this one before, but that's all I could, you know, on short notice, <laughs> that's all I could uh, think of. Uh, I will try, the, the, the title that was given to my d discussion here is uh, People to People Diplomacy, a uh, practitioner's experience or something similar to this. Um, I will use as my model uh, the Israeli-Greek relationship simply because uh, I was ambassador to Greece and I know it. I came to Greece in a very interesting time in the year 2010 and I stayed there for four years, namely until 2014. Now, as we know, it was a very interesting time because this is really where the Greek financial uh, crisis became very evident. And all, all of a sudden, while I was hoping for a quiet uh, position, you know, my last one before retirement, I, I found myself in the center of the world as far as all the, the news coming uh, from Athens. In any case, eventually I realized that I'm very lucky. Uh, I felt like a, somebody who bought a very expensive ticket to a, uh, a boxing match and gets a seat in the first row. I could see all the very things that were written all over the, the world discussed by the media. I could see it firsthand and I was uh, privileged to have access to all the leaders of the Greek state and get their perspective. So it ended up being a very interesting situation. But uh, I did not come there to solve the Greek financial crisis and I uh, was not authorized to to spend my own money to do that. No, I bought as much stuff as I could. But in any, in any case, uh, I came there to try and improve, if possible, uh, the Greek-Israeli relationship. I say improve because this relationship has really been very negative uh, for a long time. It's negative, but not in a symmetrical way. The Israelis always loved Greece its culture, the, Israeli, the Greek music is very popular in Israel. The Israeli singers who sing in Greek, uh, many Greek tunes are being uh, uh, borrowed, uh, you know, uh, by Israeli singers who make turn them into Israeli songs, and so on and so forth. But uh, Israelis like to travel to Greece. They like, like everybody else. They like uh, the, the islands and so on. But Greece was not a positive country as far as uh, we are uh, concerned. Uh, there were many reasons for this. Uh, one reason is that Greece was uh, traditionally pro-Arab. Uh, another reason was that they know how to count and there are 22 Arab countries and only one Jewish country. And they have, you know, you know their good background in, in math, uh, Pythagoras, uh, all these guys, and in, in any case, but there were for centuries. But there was another reason. Uh, they, the way they saw us, they think they thought, rightly or wrongly, that we are a proxy of the United States of America. Now, America is not popular in Greece. They believe, especially left-wing intellectuals, but even others that somehow the CIA was behind the coup. As you will uh, recall, in 1967, there was a military coup in Greece. Uh, the colonels took over. They had a military dictatorship which lasted to 1974. And they believed that somehow uh, the Americans were behind it. And uh, therefore, America is not very popular in, in Greece even today. And as I said, 
Uh, they, they believe that Israel uh, is somehow too connected to the Americans. Um, I'm happy to, to report to you that all this is behind us. Uh, we were able to change that. I'm a little reluctant that we have here uh, Turkish diplomats, but the truth should be told that the crisis between Israel and Turkey that erupted around that time uh, was uh, helpful, so to speak. And the, the Greeks felt, I think that the, the leaders of Greece at that time felt that they could tell their people, you know, now that Israel is not a friend of Turkey, uh, we can be friends of Israel. Uh, they used this as an excuse. I don't think it was true in any way, but th this was, I, I even asked the prime minister of the time, George Papandreou, and he said, you know, this is what I told my, I said, you know, it's not ex exactly like this. He said, I know, I know, but I, I had to, to explain to my people why I, had, I, I decided to change the relationship with Israel. The change, this is a sort of interesting, the change occurred uh, during the uh, tenure of uh, a socialist uh, prime minister, uh, George Papandreou, whose uh, father and I believe even his grandfather were also prime ministers in Greece. He decided, he had this Papandreou, uh, George Papandreou, he was born in the United States when his father actually was in exile on fear of those colonels that I was telling you about. And uh, Papandreou had a more global approach. He wanted to see Greece as playing a more important role, in the, at least in the Eastern Mediterranean, the, the area that we are uh, discussing today. He took the first step. Uh, and he came to Israel in the summer of 2010. Uh, I, I had the pleasure of, I was sort of an ambassador designated at that time, so I was asked to accompany him, so I, I was able to witness this, this thing from the beginning, and a decision was taken to, to improve uh, the relations between uh, the, two, the two countries. Uh, to, what happened politically, without going into all the details, after some time, the Papandreou's government was uh, lost its control. Papandreou had to uh, resign, and uh, a new this time the, the socialists were succeeded by the uh, conservatives, namely by a man called Adonis Samaras, who was the leader of a party called Nea Demokratia. Uh, these new democracy, these are. Uh, conservatives. Our challenge at that time was to make sure that they are, that they continue the same relationship with of getting closer to Israel, and we were successful. Even more of a challenge we had when the this conservative government of Samaras also collapsed, and uh, the government was taken over by what was called. He was considered at that time the extreme left by, by a man called Alexis Tsipras, a young man. And here uh, we were, I personally, I wrote articles, I said, okay, the rapprochement with Israel is over uh, because Tsipras himself was the man who organized anti-Israeli rallies during various problems that we had with Gaza, uh, but we were wrong. And today the relationship uh, with, between Israel and Greece is as strong as ever and even stronger. Um, without going into all the details, a lot of this relationship is based on military cooperation, uh, especially in Air Force. Suffice to say that Greece is seven times uh, larger than Israel and that its airspace is 20 times larger than Israel. Our pilots, when they they fly by warplane from north to south, from, as we say, from Dan or Kiat Shmone to Eilat. It takes them about 20 minutes. Uh, this is not enough when you want to train your pilots, but there's a lot more going on. I want to address now the people to people diplomacy, because we understood from the beginning that uh, governments come and go. 
and you can be friendly with this government, not with the other, but the next one. We, t we try to do something about the, the, the attitudes of the Greek people towards Israel. All polls show that it's very negative. Israel is considered, as I said, an, a negative country. We do this and this and that and this to the Palestinians. We follow the Americans and all these, these stereotypes uh, were there. We try to, to approach uh, the Greek uh, people. We use several uh, ways to do that. First of all, the, the relationship as it became stronger, it affected already the Greek people. They, many of them do believe their own uh, government. And uh, they, they started to change their attitudes, but we worked very hard in a number of other areas. For instance, with the media, we started to send Greek journalists and editors to Israel so they can get a first-hand uh, uh, view of what is actually uh, going on. Um, there was the issue of tourism. As the relationship became closer, and again, as uh, to be honest, Israelis used to go in very large numbers on vacation to Turkey, to Anatolia, but because of the political disagreements, they stopped going there, and, but the Israelis, you know, they like to go on vacation, like everybody else, they have to go somewhere. So uh, they, they started going to Greece, and we, had, uh, we have this year about 400,000 Israelis visiting Greece. Uh, the other side, the tourism from Greece is very limited, it's about 20,000 people a year. These are mostly, uh, they mostly come for religious reasons. They are pilgrims, Christians, but uh, tourism, more and more Israelis started to come. More and more Greeks started to know us. I don't want to say like us, but know us. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. See, I'm still trying to live up to the introduction. You always do. <laughs> and, uh, and that was an important factor uh, also. Uh, we started to work with academics to try and, and show, convince them, to show them. Actually, BESA had an important part in that as good relations were created between Professor Efaim in Bar and other BESA colleagues and the Greek universities. This is uh, continuing. We started bringing Israeli artists uh, to uh, to Greece, uh, we wanted to increase the the, uh, the economic sphere, the economic situation, and this we didn't succeed so much because Greece, under these very difficult financial uh, situations, cannot. Uh, our trade is about 500 million dollars a year when we, when we combine both sides. It's not much. Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, indicatory that we canceled the position of uh, of commerce attaché in Athens, and we replaced that position with a military attaché. I think this speaks volumes of what has actually happened. Of course, we tried without patronizing anybody. We tried to share some of our high tech success and knowledge uh, with the Greeks, um, and. Uh, we, there is one issue which is uh, pending, um, the, the issue of energy. For the last six years we talk about uh, exporting gas through somewhere to Europe. Uh, the Greeks are very excited about it, they would like to see it. Although, to be honest, our government wasn't very, very efficient, we still don't know how much gas we have, where is the gas, who will take, bring, take, take it out from the sea, where are we going to send it, how are we going to, all these, but in the meantime, for, for, for PR purposes, it's a very good tool, and we kept <laughs> dealing with it. Gas so far, I only saw in my house with the stove, but uh, they say that we have a lot of gas, and one day, but you know, gas has no smell. You don't know where it comes from, where it's going. But I, I hope it's true, and one day we'll, we'll actually, I may be 
wrong, totally wrong here. There may be some people here, maybe experts on gas. But we have had other candidates that some Turkish companies are interested in the gas. We might want to sell some to our neighbors, like Egypt, Jordan, and the Palestinians. So this is a difficult situation. Uh, to, I would say, I don't know if you're looking at me with a bad eye or not. Not sure. No, if you, ah, okay. So let's do it. Let's move to a different now. Uh, to sum up all of this, I would say that today uh, the relationship between Greece and Israel is better than ever. There was a certain concern recently when we were able to reach an agreement with Turkey and exchange ambassadors. This is very good news. Uh, the Greeks were concerned. They actually approached us and they said, will that affect uh, the Greek-Israeli relationship? Uh, we told them that uh, at this point we, that there shouldn't be any connection. We told them that the Greek-Israeli relationship is now standing on its own two feet. It's not come, it didn't come to replace anything else. And uh, we can be friends with Turkey and friends with Greece at the same time. We want to be friends with another hundred countries. Um, so the relationship is good, but not in the, in the EU, for instance, Greece has become one of our best friends, which normally means, almost means a double vote in the EU in our favor, because Cyprus, also a member of the European Union, always follows the lead of Greece. That's also good news, but maybe more importantly, we were able to change the attitudes uh, of of the people of the Greek people. Israel is now uh, Israel is now uh, very popular among the, the the people of Greece, which probably guarantees that regardless of what may happen politically, already we uh, did well with the socialists, with the conservatives. Uh, with the so-called extreme left, although the extreme left seem to, seems to have exactly the same policies as the conservatives and the socialists, so I'm not sure what it means. But we did so well, and I'm sure that our new situation um, with Greece, with the people of Greece, uh, is helpful. Uh, to some of our friends from America, I just want to conclude by saying that we had one big problem with PR in Greece, and that was uh, to explain the holiday of Hanukkah. Uh, you cannot tell the Greeks that we fought with the Greeks and we won. Uh, especially it was difficult in the Jewish school in Athens. But the kids are Jewish, but they are also Greeks. How do you, what, the, our solution, not mine, the teachers in the Jewish school, the solution was uh, to say that we fought with the Syrians. As you know, those of us who are like Professor Ohana, who knows history, will tell you that, that we, they were actually, there was a Hellenic entity in, in Syria of today, right? With them we fought, I think. I, I don't remember, I forgot. But in any case, uh, so we told them that we fought with Syria, and we won, and one day, yeah, one child in the, in the uh, in first grade in the Jewish school in Athens as the teacher, so we, I understand that in Hanukkah we fought with Assad. She said, yeah, sort of. And that was it. Thank you. <laughs>